It is decided, then. We will unite all Gilneans and drive the Forsaken from our lands. Hello guys, this is Orange Movies, and in this guide I will be teaching you how to roleplay as a Worgen in World of Warcraft. So in this video we will go over a few things, and most importantly their lore, and traditions, culture and all that stuff, and I will also cover personalities, classes you can play, and also will help you kinda name your character, set up a basic backstory and all that stuff. So without further ado, let's just get into their lore. Now, I'm aware that a lot of people are actually confused about Worgen lore, because I know I was around the time when Cataclysm came out, but once you get into their story and kinda understand it, it's actually pretty cool, unique and interesting. Now, I won't go like super crazy into their lore, I would just give you a really quick summary, like their lore is pretty long and pretty interesting in my opinion, but I can't like cover everything, so I'll try to give you just a quick summary. So if you want to learn about this stuff in detail, I would suggest that you read the story of uh, Jen Greymane, I also made a video about him, even though it is kinda outdated, not really the best one. You can also read Wolfheart, it's a pretty interesting book, especially covers the Worgen and their like initiation into the Alliance. And you have a bunch of other sources like Wowpedia and all that stuff. So, the Worgens that you play today aren't really these beasts that you might think they are, because they're just regular humans who are a part of a nation called Gilneas that were infected by this curse, I'm guessing everyone knew that. Now, the curse actually originates thousands of years ago with the Night Elves. Now, the Night Elves practiced many forms of druidism before because there weren't really any laws, you can practice whatever you wanted. Well, until like, re not recently, but at least a few millennia. But there was this bunch called the Druids of the Pack, which worshipped a feral ancient called Golgen. I mean, you can learn more about him in Wolfheart, as I described previously. And he's he's pretty well like described in that book, so you can you can see how they kind of describe how he looks and all that stuff. So Malfurion caught up onto them and realized that it wasn't really safe to practice that form of druidism, and that turning into a worgen was really hard to control, and you can risk losing your mind or doing something you wouldn't want to do. So he actually banned it, and later on they were in a war with the satyr, and one of them didn't use his form in order to like respect. Malfurion's thing that he banned it, and he didn't use the form and he didn't defend himself and he died, which pissed off the rest of the druids. And later on, the druids of the site was formed and they didn't just turn into worgen, they actually managed to tame the beast, if you could say that, and become the worgen themselves, which completely drew them insane, they lost their minds and all that stuff. They actually attacked Malfurion, but they failed and were banished into the Emerald Dream, However, that definitely wasn't the end of the Worgen. Now, thousands of years later, the Gilnea nation was going strong and was becoming very industrialized and stronger in economy and was really becoming a big nation. And then the orcs attacked, they kinda helped in the first war, but in the second war Lordran begged them for help but they didn't want to do it as they thought that the rest of the humans would try to abuse their wealth and after the first war, Jen Greymind ordered his men to build this giant wall which completely isolated them from the entire world and they started living in their entire own universe. They had their own villages, towns, farms, factories and all of that was needed in order to sustain an actual kingdom. Now, it was working out for them quite well for around 20 years, I mean they pretty much had everything, until the Scourge started bunching up in front of their walls. Now, Arugal, who was a very powerful mage, with the permission of Jen Greymane, because the situation was so dire, and he had to actually summon the ancient worgen from the Emberton Dream. He actually managed to do it due to the help of a tree, but I really can't go into detail. And of course, the worgen fought well and defeated the Scourge, but that definitely wasn't the end. I mean, the worgen started infecting the citizens of Gilneas, and soon the curse started spreading out like wildfire, the Gilneas citizens started turning into worgens. Even Jen Greymane was bitten by a worgen on one of his hunts, as he organized these secret hunts in order to get rid of the worgen, but he kinda failed on that, obviously. Also thought it was worth mentioning, before we get into the actual events of the Cataclysm, that the Dead Knights that we have playable today aren't really Gilnea citizens, and are just the worgen who escaped and were captured by the Scourge, even though they were immune to the plague of undead, like the, when you're a worgen you can't get infected by the plague, but they weren't really immune to the rituals of a Dead Knight, so that's why they are the Dead Knights. But anyways, the cataclysm happened and their walls were shattered, destroyed, and of course the forsaken on their front doors, they also attacked them navally because they had like these reefs, like a block on the sea, but that was destroyed with the cataclysm as well, so they attacked them by ships. 
Well, they also had a civil war going on between Crowley and Jen Greymane. It was a giant war that kind of like ended afterwards. And Gilneas fell and Gilnean people needed help. So they turned to the Night Elves first and then later on to Varian Vryn. Which, after a lot of talk, accepted them into the Alliance. And when I say a lot of talk, I mean like he barely accepted them. I mean, they pretty much made a whole book, like 500 pages, called Wolfheart. Dedicated to their initiation to the Alliance. I mean, not everything else about the Worgen, but generally the book covers the Worgen, Goldrin, also Garrosh on the other side, but that doesn't really matter too much. Also, what happened in Gilnas as well is that the uh, alchemist that you kind of saved in the introduction questline found a serum for the curse that made them control the form instead of being taken by it. So, that is pretty much how the today's Worgen work. Now, today they're just a part of the Alliance and reside in Alliance cities, so. Nothing really crazy is going on with them. Now, let's get a bit into their culture and traditions as well. Now, Gilneas is a very, very nationalistic country, and they think that Gilneas is like the best nation in the world, that everything that comes out of Gilneas is the best, the Gilnean army is the best and all that, and that is actually mostly because they have been isolated for over 20 years and lived by themselves without any contact with other cultures, and especially if some young Gilneans, for example, were babies, or were born inside Gilneas, meaning that they probably never even seen the outside world until recently. So they were raised to think good about Gilneas, and I know even in the real world, I mean you have citizens that are nationalistic and that are not, but most of the Gilneans actually are, if not all of them, maybe with a few exceptions, because that was kind of their only home and they didn't really have anywhere else to go. So they kind of had to believe in Gilneas and build it into what it was. Now if you couldn't tell from their insane British accents or this amazing like stylized architecture and all that stuff, their culture was actually based on the 19th century England. And they also seem to be this aristocrat stereotype, meaning that they appear very cultured. They put a lot of value into paintings, jewelry, they also have like these social ladders and all that stuff. Even though there are other parts of the society as well, I mean, since they had to rely on themselves, they built an entire working society that required really no outside help. So they had their own farmers, factory workers, tailors, bakers, miners, soldiers, guards, and all that stuff. So if you plan on getting a detailed backstory for your character, I would suggest picking one of these professions that you like did in the past. Because you couldn't just do nothing in the Gilneas, as every citizen was valuable for the isolated nation. Now, let's discuss the curse for a bit. So, now that you know that the Worgens aren't actually Worgens, and that they actually just have the ability to turn into them, or the so-called curse, you have to understand that not all of the Worgens feel the same about it, and that you can control it in many ways. Now, generally speaking, the curse is a bad thing, but it can also be a good thing depending on your own personality that you pick. So, I will cover this part in more detail in the personalities types, like in the second part of the video, but I just want to give you a few choices you can pick. So pretty much you have two forms. And you can decide on how the other wild form will affect you. And you can either fully control it or be kind of split about it or even uncontrollable. Although don't really go too crazy about it. I mean it's your choice, you probably want to decide how you want to handle the curse. But as I said I will cover it all in detail in the second part of the video. Pretty much before the end. Alright now on how to talk like a worker. Now unlike some other races. There isn't really anything like that special about their speech, apart from their like strong accents, but they generally speak the same language as the humans, without any like crazy words or apostrophes or pauses or whatever it is like the dwarves or the trolls and all that stuff. So just feel free to type as you would in English, and of course if you're British it might even feel a bit more natural. And lastly, before we get into personalities and classes, let's discuss a bit on how you should actually name your character. Now. Even though a lot of people think that like if you're a worgen, you should be called something like feral heart, cream jaw, like claws or whatever it is. But you do have to actually keep in mind that this curse is recent. And before that, they were just regular humans, just like the, any other humans. So your worgen probably should have a human name. Now, Jen Greymane is a really convenient coincidence, I guess. I mean, it's obviously like made by Blizzard just for the worgen curse and all of that. But it's, it's mostly because of his last name, but I don't think you should do that. Like, think of something that is worgen sounding, but also humanish as well, as it can be quite corny. But you can, you can, like, pull it off if you want. So, generally, I would look at the worgen NPCs and base my name around them. Or just generally look up, wow, human names, or even just common British names. 
as it is quite similar and it can work pretty well for your character. Now let's get a bit into the personalities you can pick. Now I will only give you a few drastic examples which you can base your character off like guidelines. So feel free to do whatever you want to do with these as these are just sort of examples, sort of like a starting point. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, personalities are mostly based on the curse and how the Worgen are actually handling that curse. So the first personality would be the peaceful control one. So if you're playing something like this, it means that you can control the Worgen curse quite well and you don't completely like lose your mind when you acquire the form, meaning that there won't be like any drastic changes between your Worgen and your human form. So your personality should be kind of based on your human form or however you choose it to be. Now if you're playing this type of organ, you might be kind of calm or peaceful and understanding and all that stuff. However, you can really pick any sort of human traits, you don't really have to be peaceful if you don't want to. Now second it would be the split personality. Now this one is a bit different, but can be really really interesting if done right, you can really pull something off with it. This means that your organ is sort of like struggling with the curse and he has like two different personalities. One for the organ and one for his human form. You can also talk to the other personalities, all that stuff, maybe like in third person. However, really be careful when doing this, because it's not really that easy to pull off. I would say it's quite difficult, and you can be really like corny about it if you don't do it in the right way. And the last personality I'm going to mention is the aggressive one. Now, this is really just a straightforward personality, and it isn't really too hard to pull off, I guess. I mean, it means that you're either aggressive by nature, or that you're aggressive in your organ form. However, don't try to do the opposite, as in you were like peaceful in your organ form but aggressive as a human, as it doesn't really work in that way. You can also go about it in two ways, like either being aggressive before the curse, like by nature, or just having your personality affected by the curse. So these are just sort of, as I would call them, cookie cutter personalities that you can choose and build from. And they aren't even really just personalities, I mean, it's mostly just how you can choose to handle the curse. While your general nature should be the same around as you would design it for a human. However, do keep in mind that lore and uh, culture I mentioned previously in the video, so kind of try to base it around that. And lastly, let's get into some of the classes that you can pick. Like, some of them are working in-game, some of the subclasses you can choose to roleplay as. So, as always, first would be the warrior class. Now, the warrior is generally just an enhanced, like a regular warrior, nothing really special about it. I mean, a lot of Gilnans were warriors, and now with the curse they got, they also have all these buffs like agility, strength, uh, quickness and all that stuff, so they are even more effective, and it would be really good to start out this class, it isn't really too hard to do, and generally you can pick a few subclasses, you can either be one of the Crowley's men, or part of the Grey Mane's loyal guard, you can also be a mercenary, so you kinda have your hands open, it's, it's kinda the same as with all other warriors. Now next would be the Hunter. Now Hunter is really interesting class to pick when playing a Worgen, since they have like these awesome Mastiff pets, and it suits your culture as well. I mean generally they aren't like born hunters or like nature people like the Tauren or the Orcs for example, but they like to hunt and can be quite good at it, and generally since a lot of them are aristocrats, they could probably hunt on like the weekends, just like Jen Grayman used to do, like from sport. But since they are working now, they kind of like hunting more, a lot more. And they also like to chase their prey. And yeah, it's, it's a bit more natural once you're working. So if you pick this class, you can go about it in a few ways. You can either be like a hound master or just a rifleman or just generally just a regular hunter. And the next class would be the rogue. Now this can work quite well and I don't know why but for some reason this one looks really good to me, kind of like appeals to me since they have like this sort of like dark architecture and sort of like a gritty style with rain and all that stuff like dark alleyways. So it's like a perfect place to pick like a pickpocketer or, a, or an assassin and all that stuff. So generally the Gilnans are very rich and wealthy but I mean when there is a lot of wealth there is also a lot of poor people so that means that some of the Gilnans had to become thieves in order to survive. And also they can be quite efficient as assassins as well since they have this new curse and all of the newfound skills. Now let's go over the druids. Now Gilnan druids are very different actually from the other druids, or at least they used to be. I mean even before the actual curse they used to practice this weird style of druidism they like to call the old ways. 
which generally isn't anything advanced and is sort of just like basic druidism. They can grow some of the nature, like the crops. They can also control the weather a bit and all that, which is perfect when they were isolated as they can build their own like farms and all that stuff. But after they came out of the isolation, they also met the night elves who taught them the true ways of druidism and all the advanced stuff. So if you want to be a druid, this would kind of be the best way to go about it. And lastly, I'm going to cover the warlocks. Now, generally the Galnans aren't really warlocks, but there were a few of them, and even though it was kind of shunned upon, and even though it wasn't really allowed to practice such like dark magics, a lot of these warlocks were accepted as they were invaded from all sides and were facing many chests, so any help that was available was valuable to the Galnans. So, warlocks were definitely helpful because they're, I believe, considered to be the most powerful casters in the game, and the demonic magics they practice are quite efficient. Now, I don't really see any specific like subclasses you can pick as a warlock, but generally Gilnean warlocks are very few in numbers and weren't really such a widespread thing as you might have thought. Now, I know there is a few other classes that I haven't covered since I don't really have the time in this video, I don't want to make it like an hour video, but you can also have the priests who work well since they always kind of practice the ways of the light, plus even the shadow now as well. Also you have the mages, who aren't really anything special, as a lot of humans can practice such magics. And lastly there are the death knights, that I don't really want to cover in this video, as it is a really really wide and a confusing topic. And it will probably be either a separate video, just on the Gilneans, or once I finish all the races, I'll probably cover the death knights, like sort of a death knight RP guide, and then I will go by each race, and obviously Worgen will take like the biggest part of the video. And that is all I have for this guide, I hope you had enjoyed, or at least I hope it helped you out a bit with setting up your character. Leave some feedback on what race you would like to see covered next in the RP Guide series. Also, thanks a lot for taking your time to watch this video, and don't forget to like, favorite and subscribe as it really helps out the channel and really keeps these videos going. And also you can check out my Twitch stream in the channel description as I kinda stream a few times a week now. And thanks so much for watching and see you next time.